So, in the late 18th century, as you probably already know, a certain something happened that changed the course of our planet's history, and that is the Americans won. Now stripped of a major portion of their wood supply, Britain began to switch to coal for heating. Of course, not everybody was happy with this change. Coal had some zealous opponents, some which even claimed that it was the devil's excrement, dug up from deep down towards hell at the center of the earth. Nowadays, I feel as though nuclear energy has become the new devil's excrement. Many think of it as a fundamentally evil invention of science craziness, a constant threat on the human environment, on the, on the human health and the environment that has no place in our future. Today, my hope is to share with you the other side of the story. I'm not going to try to convince you that nuclear energy is the best source out there, by the way. No. Instead, I'm going to tell you only one thing. Nuclear energy is safe. First, let's get set away. A nuclear power plant, under any circumstances, will not explode. At all. Actually, not, not even a little bit. It's not going to violently explode or, you know, just feebly explode, it's not going to work. Because the uranium fuel that is used at a nuclear plant is enriched at most, around 5%, and to make a nuclear bomb, you would have, you have to have at least 90% enrichment. But I think most people already know this. Most people don't fear nuclear energy because they think it's going to explode. They fear nuclear energy because of the accidents that happened with nuclear power plants in the past. We tend to make the incorrect assumption, assumption that these accidents have shown us how dangerous nuclear energy is, Yet, in reality, they have shown us how safe nuclear energy is. Think about it. Although certain incidents with experimental, non-commercial reactors, mostly military projects designed to power instruments and vehicles and so on, have led to deaths in the past with nuclear association reports, no civilian death has ever taken place as a result of a nuclear explosion, or, well, not a nuclear explosion, yes, but a nuclear <laughs> mishap, except for Chernobyl. None. Including the power plant workers in the cleanup crew. The accident that occurred at Three Mile Island in 1979, for instance, showed us how effective the plant safety measures were. Almost half of the reactor core melted down, and yet the radionucleides released from the molten fuel mostly played out inside the plant, or dissolved in the condensing steam. Let's not leave it in sight. The, in the, in the containment vessel that encompassed the reactor further prevented any significant release of radioactivity. In fact, World Nuclear Association reports that the emergency core cooling system would have prevented any damage to the reactor, but for the intervention of the operators. The accident that occurred at Fukushima Daiichi in 2011 showed us how fear is not the right response to a nuclear incident. The International Atomic Energy Agency reports that no harmful effects were found to the 200,000 residents living in the vicinity of the plant who were screened by the end of May 2011. All the 1,000 children tested for thyroid gland exposure showed results within safe limits. Really, the accident's death toll was more closely linked to how the residents of the area were evacuated. Documented deaths included mortalities among the elderly who were put under temporary housing, as well as mortalities due to stress during the evacuation process. Which brings us to the worst nuclear disaster that ever took place on this planet, Chernobyl, 1986. The reactor itself lacked many of the safety precautions found in its Western counterparts, including a proper containment dome. And uh, on the day of the disaster, the facility was being tested for safety, though ironically the test clearly violated any reasonable safety procedure on multiple frontiers. The control rods inside the reactor were <coughs> disabled, and the emergency core cooling and shutdown systems were completely turned off. Also, the residents of the area were uninformed of the accident until 36 whole hours later. Even then, the death toll is not of epidemic proportions. World Nuclear Association reports that 56 people lost their lives due to radiation poisoning in the immediate aftermath of the disaster. About 20,000 cases of thyroid cancer were diagnosed between 1991 and 2015 in patients who were 18 and under at the time of the accident. Of the diagnosis made between 1991 and 2005, only 15 proved to be fatal. <coughs> Here, it's also worth mentioning that no increase in any other type of cancer in any other age group has been detected. Now, you might say that these incidents took place in the past, and we should look at the future, and I guess that makes sense. But uh, I don't think I need to stand here and tell you that uh, nuclear power plants and their waste containment facilities are regulated tightly, much more tightly, in fact, than air polluting, particularly anything silent killers like coal power plants. 
But I do think you want to hear the extent to which uh, scientists went to ensure we're prepared for anything fate might decide to throw our way. Obviously, nuclear power plants are constructed with factors such as floods and, er floods and earthquakes in mind. But did you know that scientists have even researched into the effects of a hypothetical terrorist attack where a small-sized airplane is hijacked and deliberately crashed into a nuclear plant? The results suggest that an airliner would tend to break up as it hit various buildings such as the reactor hull, and that those pieces would have little effect on the concrete biological shield surrounding the reactor. Any kerosene fire would also have a little effect on said shield. So yeah, I would say nuclear energy is pretty darn safe. Thanks very much. <laughs>